In this video, let's talk about splines, how to make them, how to edit them, and also spline tangency, which I think is a pretty hot topic. So I'm going to start by drawing a line and an arc, and then I'll linear pattern those. And then after the linear pattern, I'll make little sketch text labels. And I have three types of splines here. I have spline, control spline, and interpolation. Let's talk about our regular spline. This works simply by selecting a start point. And then I can select points basically wherever I want. And then I select an end point. And all the points that I selected in between are points that the spline will pass through. And this is how we determine the curvature of the spline. I also can click and drag and reposition the spline as needed. You notice the key feature of a spline is it does not have a constant radius in its curvature, but it kind of goes wherever we want it to go. The next spline is a control spline, and this works quite differently. And this is secretly my favorite spline to work with. I select my start point, and I start selecting points, and you can tell that the spline does not pass through these control points, but rather the control points influence the curvature of the spline. When I'm all done, I can hit escape or double click on my last point. And my spline is defined in that way. Now I have an interpolation spline. So I can come out, go over here and select spline by interpolation points. And if you can tell, I select points and the spline passes through them just like my regular default spline tool. So what's the difference? Well, when I select my last point, you can tell there are no points on the body of the spline, but there are points on the body of my default spline. So this spline in Alibre Help is said to be responsive to tangent vectors or tangency, whereas this one is not. If I wish to edit these splines, of course, I can simply click and drag the points on my default spline. Very easy to edit. What about my control spline? Well, I can click this drop down menu and I can come down here to move control points. And when I click on the spline I wish to edit, the control points show back up and I can reposition the control points as I wish. If I go to move control points, well, as you can tell, this spline is converted into having control points. So even though we didn't draw an interpolation spline with these control points, if I go to move spline control points, these are created off of the spline. And of course, and of course I can edit this spline by the control points if I so desire to edit the spline that way. I also have this option to insert spline reference point. So let's say I want to add some extra curvature in here, but I don't have enough points clicked to do it. Well, I can simply click on a few places on the spline and reference points are added. Maybe I can add a small sub wavy feature in here. So spline reference points are things that I can click and affect the curvature of the spline. If I try a reference point on a control spline, nothing happens. And the same for an interpolation. So control points are only going to apply to the regular old splines that we draw by default. I can select move control points and that does not affect our regular spline, but it does affect our control spline. And it does affect our interpolation spline. So you can start to divide these by splines that have points on the body and splines that do not. It's an easy way to think about how these controls affect these different splines. We have move curve points. And from here I can select a curve point. And even though I drew this with a series of control points, you can tell that curve points are generated on the spline for me to move so that I can adjust my control spline in the same way that I would edit an interpolation spline. Likewise, I can use the same control on my interpolation spline and edit it that way as well. 
I also have insert knots. So just as I inserted a spline reference point on this spline, I can insert a knot on a control spline. If you can tell, wherever I click, there are more points or knots on this spline. And certainly when I go to move control points, I can use these inserted points to increase the complexity or curvature of my spline. The control for that will also work here as I insert knots on the spline. Finally, I can remove knots. I'll select a spine and it says no redundant knots to remove. So let me insert a knot, maybe maybe some knots along here and now I can say remove knots and it says removed three redundant knots so if a spline is relying upon uh, knots for curvature those cannot be deleted but if I have extra knots that I wish to get rid of it will automatically remove those because they're not contributing to the curvature of the spline <clears throat> that should be every control that we've gone by but often, we would want to have a spline that would be a tangent to other parts of our sketch. How do we deal with tangency and splines? Well, let's take a look. So I'll start on the XY plane by making a sketch. And as before, I'll make a vertical line and an arc, as those are pretty common when used in sketches. And let's say I want to make a spline that is, starts at the arc, comes down to the line, and is tangent to both. Well, I'm going to start by making some reference geometry that is tangent to my line and my arc. Of course, I'll have to make that vertical. And then I'll make a line here and simply use the tangent constraint. So as long as my start point and my end point have some reference geometry that is tangent to them, this should work just fine. We'll start by making a spline by control points, my secret, uh, secretly favorite spline to draw. And I'll go from here, and I'll make sure that my second point that I put down is on the tangent geometry. It's very important. And then I can make whatever profile I'd like that's crazy, and then I'll make my second to my last point on the other tangent geometry, and then I can double click to draw my spline. And now I have a spline that is tangent to the arc and tangent to the line. And that is simply by virtue that my second control point and my second to my last control point both are on the tangent geometry, right? That's how those control points work with that spline. And I can prove this out to myself simply by coming to here. We'll pretend like we're fully constrained as that's the best practice. I'll make an extrude and I have uh, some of these lines on the model where my spline ends and my line and my arc begin. So let's fillet that. All right, because fillets are for sharp edges. So we'll add a fillet here and add a fillet here. And it looks like I've got a, uh, a problem. So I'm going to click apply. And of course, the fillets weren't added because my apply button was red. We'll go to the status and we see at least one of the input edges should be non smooth. And so Essentially, at least in practice, we're able to prove out that we have tangency because there's no sharp edge in this transition that we would have otherwise been able to fill it according to our error message. So I'll delete my fillet. I'll go back and edit my sketch. As we talked about before, we are able to move control points, select our spline. You can tell we still have tangency there even though we've moved some control points around. So we'll deactivate that. We'll go to fill it once again. Up, oh, we've got a problem. We are still smooth. So we've been able to edit our spline while maintaining tangency. I would caution you, however, we still retain the method to be able to move uh, curve points 
deactivate the sketch, add a fillet, Oh, yep, we're still smooth. Nonetheless, let's go through one weakness that this uh, method has. If I were to adjust the elements of my sketch that are not the spline, you can tell we are no longer tangent there. So that can be a problem, right? My suggestion is fully constrain your sketch and then add the spline for uh, spline by control points. Because now, after I've made an adjustment to the sketch, I guess I should raise that. We can add fillets because those are sharp edges now. Uh, so this would be a workflow that you would delete your spline, edit your sketch somehow, and then redraw your spline, and then redraw your spline, again with the method of having your first and your last control, or your second to your first and your second to your last control points on the tangent geometry, and then you'll be tangent. Let's talk about another method. So again, I'll go on to my XY plane in a new part. I'll make a line that doesn't have any constraints on it. I'll make an arc that doesn't have any constraints on it. And I'll do my best, oh, but I wanna change this to interpolation spline. I'll do my best to draw a spline that is as tangent as possible. So that looks pretty tangent. Let's add a, a tangent relation from here to here. Tangency has been added. From here to here, tangency has been added. And uh, we can add tangency on this, uh, particularly because if I go into B-spline by interpolation notes, we're talking about uh, end tangent vectors if we specify them. Now, this may not be absolutely perfect every time. Sometimes I've had some trouble, but generally this is uh, more supportive of tangent vectors than the regular spline option that we have here. So let's try working with a regular spline. So I'll choose the vertical constraint in my sketch for a line and then an arc. And I'll anchor down and then I'll select regular old spline and I'll arrange these points to try to be as tangent as possible. And then add the tangent constraint. There it goes, tangent. Rearrange this one to appear tangent. Now, nope. so we've got one side. Let's try rearranging a little bit. Oh, tangent. So that one fired as well. So it is possible to put tangency on, on a regular old spline, but it's not supported and probably not likely, so don't count on it. Will normal tangent spline work? Don't count on it! All oh! right, try some of the other methods that will uh, that that are meant to be reliable. Uh, does this mean that we cannot? use some sort of ta predictable tangency for a regular old spline? Well, there is a way uh, that was shown to me, and I like it quite a lot. Let me delete the spline, and I'll move up here. And once again, reference geometry as before. Make sure that our reference geometry is tangent. I'm going to start my spline at one end and say point, 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 and then I can create whatever profile I'd like, and then point, 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 and end. So three points close to your start and end point is what you need. Coincident here, 
So our three points are coincident to our tangent geometry. We run the points quite close to the start and end point. We'll do the same thing. We're already coincident here. So make our third point coincident. Make sure that our points are close to the end point. Of course, close is an arbitrary thing. You get to decide what is close. And now we have something where the spline acts tangent and its tangency is somewhat determined by the distance of those three points and so on. So that is yet another way that we can act tangent. Now one point to make, we're going to extrude. We can see the points where our spline starts and ends. So I've got a fillet here. You'll see I'm adding a very, very small fillet, and that's because this appears to come very, very, very close to tangent, but is not quite tangent. So even a big fillet like 0.5, I could probably make this 5. Oh, maybe not that big, but 1. <laughs> and, uh, and then you're actually tangent because, of course, that's what fillets are. They're tangent. So you can always use this method, and if you need absolute perfect tangency, this should bring you absolute perfect tangency by adding the fillets. With that being said, another user known as Ex Machina in the community has put out a video on spline tangency also, and this covers an entirely different concept of spline tangency altogether. Uh, it's again another highly reliable method for spline tangency, and uh, I think it's a very impressive video. I learned some things, and I sure hope you will too. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description. Give that channel a subscribe. Uh, Ex Machina is doing a great job. Thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to the Libra channel as well, and we'll see you in the next one.